uki goshi, okay? Uki goshi, floating hip. Um, this was uh, Professor Kano's uh, favorite technique. This is also um, the one technique that you should master, okay? Before you wanna learn stuff like Uchimata, Murata Goshi, Hani Goshi, more high level judo throws, okay? Um, Uki Goshi is one of the great primer techniques with it. Now, it is a hip toss, and you're gonna notice something different about this technique. What is the one thing you notice real different about this technique? You didn't turn all the way around. Exactly. You, you kind of stop halfway, you know? Um, I have a real funny terminology for it. I call it making the T, okay? And that's, that's what our bodies are kind of doing in this position, making the T. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be doing. We'll start in a square stance with sleeve lapel grips, both of us. Justin's break fall is gonna be a front rolling break fall. <clears throat> Starting from here, hands are gonna go up, right foot is gonna turn to the side and try to hit the X, here. Right hand achieves an underhook position. Left foot goes onto the hexagon, okay? Now, once the left foot comes onto the hexagon, we move to our check position. From here, we squat, and eyes and hands start to go to the number seven, okay? That's here. Eyes and hands start to go to the number seven. And when I do this, my hip, the one essential piece of the puzzle here is your hip wants to be on the other side of his belt knot. I don't want his belt knot to be in front of me, like this. I want to put his belt knot behind me with my hip. So, when I get to this position and I squat, move your hip in front of the belt knot. Okay, and that's the one little caveat to this technique that makes it. Eyes and hands go to the number seven, and then to finish, eyes, uh, eyes and hands go to the six. From here, when we take the initial step, when we get the underhook, you can see when I'm talking about this T-shape of our body, okay? Whereas with all the other ones, we return completely. So with Uki Goshi, we're here and here. Once this foot steps and we squat, again, put that hip in front, and there's a tug and a pull into me, and that's going to that number seven. To finish, it's a Eyes looking at six, I'm turning and looking at six, my hands are pulling to six as well. The huge mistake that's gonna be made right here is you're not gonna squat, okay? That's gonna be your huge mistake right here. You're gonna to get to this position and not squat and try to turn here, okay? Once you get to this position, the squat has to come here. That's gonna allow that rotation to come through. Okay? And you can see there's a little more lean to this one here. But man, master this throw. This is one of the few throws that I would tell people like, um, if they would ask me what one throw should I absolutely master, and I would say that you go without a shadow. And I mean, if Kano liked it. Yeah, I know it's teaching my day, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, here we go. The receiver's responsibilities for Uki Goshi. Let's go over those. Let's go over a few points that the receiver has to do uh, in this position. And mainly relates to where they break falling and how they break falling. Also, a couple ways that he assists me to make sure I perform the technique correctly. Okay. So uh, when we start in this when we start in this position and the, the thrower achieves here, okay, what Uke's responsibility here is is to prepare to get thrown. Okay. The free arm is the one that's going to slap the mat. Now, as the Uke gets to this position, the one thing that he wants to avoid doing is jumping around his partner's legs. So he doesn't want to do that. Okay. A, a real good way to do it is, is to kind of think, keep your feet on the, in that start position for as long as possible, okay? Stay in that start position as long as possible. Another responsibility that he wants to have here, as this person off balances him, is to lean into the technique a little bit and get up on his toes. He'll be very hard to throw him if he's 
pulling back. I'm trying to pull this way and he's pulling that way and I'm really not good at this and you know what I mean? And the technique's not gonna work. So don't pull back. As the person starts to pull, lean forward into the seven here as well, okay? And then avoid jumping over that leg to cut and give. Now the break fall is gonna be super easy. This free hand's gonna slap. As me as the thrower, I'm, especially on these the, the whippy throws, the, the over the hip throws and stuff like that, I wanna hold on to the sleeve. It actually helps with the break fall. It actually helps with the break fall. Okay, so get here. All right, now if you look at Uke in this position, the arm comes out, the legs are in a great position, and then beautiful break fall here. And you can see with Uke Goshi, how, yeah, how you land right here in a different, in a, in a, well, in a kind of different way, but you don't get thrown over. Okay. Uki Goshi, floating hip, and skill level one. Receiver is going to start with a sleeve lapel grip. Their left foot is going to be on the black two, and their right foot is going to be on the red two. The break fall for this position is going to be a front rolling break fall. Your thrower starting position is going to be sleeve lapel grip, left foot on the black two, right foot on the red two, simulating a square stance. For your entry, your hands are going to go up, right foot goes to the X, Let, uh, right arm achieves an underhook. Your left foot steps on the hexagon. For your check position, squat and adjust the hip. Eyes and hands start pulling toward the number seven. For your finish, your eyes and hands go toward the number six.